Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 30 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the Poisson distribution and we did both cases. The case when the Poisson distribution is a limiting approximation to the binomial and the case when we have a Poisson process. Also, towards the end of the lecture, I presented to you a brief discussion of the continuous uniform distribution. In today's lecture, students, we will be discussing the most important distribution in statistical theory and that is the normal distribution. I will be presenting to you some of its important and main properties and also its application in various situations. But let us begin first of all with its formal definition. As you now see on the screen, a continuous random variable is said to be normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma if its probability density function is given by f of x is equal to 1 over sigma under root 2 pi multiplied by e raised to minus half into x minus mu over sigma whole square and this function is valid for all x values ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity. Students, ye bazahir bohat hi complicated expression hai, lekin it is very interesting to find that when we substitute various values of x in this equation, we get values of f of x which when we plot yield a beautiful bell shaped distribution which is called the normal distribution. The normal distribution was discovered in 1733. It has two parameters mu and sigma and students it can be mathematically proved that if our function is of the form that I just presented then mu is the mean of this distribution and sigma is the standard deviation. This brings us to the first property of the normal distribution and as you now see on the screen the property number one is that for the normal distribution represented by n mu sigma square mu represents the mean and sigma represents the standard deviation of the distribution. Ye jo abhi maine aapke saamne expression present kiya capital N or bracket mein mu comma sigma square students this is the generally accepted way of presenting a normal distribution yani bracket ke andar hum comma se pehle mean ki value likh dete hain aur comma ke baad variance ki value so for example if we write capital n 3 comma 4 what does it mean we are talking about a normal distribution whose mean is equal to 3 and whose variance is equal to 4, in other words, whose standard deviation is equal to 2. Now students, since mu represents the mean of the distribution, therefore it is a measure of location as I indicated in an earlier lecture, the mean is also called a measure of location. Therefore, as we change the value of mu, keeping sigma constant, the normal distribution shifts its position on the x-axis as you now see on the screen. If mu1 is less than mu2 and mu2 is less than mu3 but the standard deviation sigma remains constant then we have three identical normal distributions as far as their spread is concerned but they are located at three different positions on the x-axis. The one with the smallest mean value being 
toward the left side and the one with the largest mean value toward the right side of the x axis. Now, what happens to the normal distribution? If mu is kept constant, but sigma changes students, as you now see on the screen, if we have three normal distributions with identical mean mu, but with different standard deviations, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, such that sigma 1 is less than sigma 2, and sigma 2 is less than sigma 3, then the one which has the smallest standard deviation is the tallest and narrowest, and the one having the largest standard deviation is the one which is the most wide and the least peaked one. The second property of the normal distribution is that the normal curve is asymptotic to the x axis as x tends to plus infinity or minus infinity. Students, ye jo loves asymptotic humne istemal kiya. Um, you must be already aware that it is a pure mathematical concept and we say that a curve is asymptotic to a line if the curve approaches the line, but it does not actually touch the line until you reach infinity. Is distribution may it is a bell shaped distribution and is ki jo dono tails hain, they are approaching the x axis towards minus infinity and plus infinity, but you never actually get to uh, see them touching the x axis because we actually never reach minus infinity or plus infinity. So, it, we should always whenever we draw this um, graph, we should always be careful enough not to join the tails of the normal distribution with the x axis. And the third property of the normal distribution is as you now see on the screen, because of the fact that the normal curve is absolutely symmetric around the mean, therefore, 50 percent of the area under the normal curve is to the left of the mean and 50 percent to the right. Since the total area under the curve is equal to 1, therefore, this means that the area from minus infinity up to mu is equal to 0 0.5 and the area from mu to plus infinity is also 0 0.5. The next property of the normal distribution is that the density function attains its maximum value at x is equal to mu and this is why the mean, median and the mode of the normal distribution they are all equal to mu. Students, ye baat to hum bohat pehle bhi discuss kar chuke hai na, ke agar humari hump shaped distribution absolutely symmetric ho, to mean, median and mode, they are all equal to that same central value that we have. All right. The next property of the normal distribution is, as you now see on the screen, that since the normal distribution is absolutely symmetrical, therefore, mu 3, the third moment about the mean is 0. Property number 6 states that for the normal distribution, mu 4, the fourth moment about the mean is equal to 3 times sigma raised to 4. Property number 7 is that the moment ratios of the normal distribution come out to be 0 and 3 respectively. As you will recall, the first moment ratio beta 1 is defined as mu 3 square over mu 2 cubed and because of the fact that mu 3 is equal to 0, 
for the normal distribution. Therefore, beta 1 also comes out to be 0. Also, beta 2 is defined as mu 4 over mu 2 square and as I just mentioned mu 4 is equal to 3 times sigma raised to 4 and mu 2 square is equal to sigma square whole square which is also sigma raised to 4 and therefore dividing the numerator by the denominator the second moment ratio beta 2 comes out to be equal to 3. Students, aap ko yaad hoga ke jab hum frequency distribution ke hawale se kurtosis ki discussion kar rahe the, tab humne kaha tha ke we will be computing B2 which is the counterpart of beta 2 and if B2 comes out to be equal to 3, we will say that our distribution is mesokurtic that is like the normal distribution. So, ab is waqt ye jo property mein aapke saamne present ki, this indicates that this is the reason why that number 3 was taken as the criterion. Chunke normal distribution ke case mein ye mathematically prove ho jata hai ke beta 2 is equal to 3. Therefore, we take this number as a standard or hum kehte hain ke kisi bhi frequency distribution mein agar second moment ratio 3 ke barabar aa jaye to phir hamari distribution normal ki tarah ki hai as far as kurtosis or peakedness is concerned the next property of the normal distribution is concerning the areas under the normal curve students as you now see on the slide no matter what the values of mu and sigma are, the interval mu plus minus sigma will always contain 68.26 percent of the total area. The interval mu plus minus 2 sigma will always contain 95.44 percent of the total area. And the interval mu plus minus 3 sigma will always contain 99.73 percent of the total area. Students, at this point, I would like to remind you about the empirical rule that I discussed with you in the first part of this course. Aapko yaad hai, humne baat ki thi ke agar hamari distribution approximately normal ho to approximately 68 percent of the area lies between x bar minus s and x bar plus s 95 percent lies between x bar minus 2s and x bar plus 2s and approximately 100 percent lies between x bar minus 3s and x bar plus 3s. I hope that you will now realize where those values came from. Aapne dekha ke agar hamari distribution absolutely normal ho, to areas hain 68.26 percent, 95.44 percent and 99.73 percent. Aur chunke real life data jo hota hai, wo approximately normal to ho sakta hai, lekin absolutely normal to nahi hoga. Isliye we can uh, have approximations to these exact values. All right, the next property of the normal distribution relates to the points of inflection. As you now see on the screen, the normal curve contains points of inflection where the direction of the concavity changes and these points are equidistant from the mean their coordinates on the x y plane are mu minus sigma comma 1 over sigma under root of 2 pi e and mu plus sigma comma 1 over sigma under root 2 pi e. Aye, is property ko understand karne ki koshish karte hain. 
देखिए स्टूडेंट्स द नॉर्मल कर्व इज लाइक अ बेल इट इज अ ब्यूटिफुल बेल शेप डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और आप ये नोट करें कि अगर इसके अंदर ये दो पॉइंट्स जिन्हें हम पॉइंट्स ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन कहते हैं अगर ये ना होते तो इट कुड हैव बीन समथिंग लाइक एन इन्वर्टेड कप लेकिन चूंकि ये दो पॉइंट्स इसमें हैं जहाँ पे डायरेक्शन ऑफ कॉन्केविटी चेंजेस इन पॉइंट्स के अंदर द कर्व इज कॉन्केव डाउनवर्ड लेकिन इन पॉइंट्स के बाहर द कर्व इज कॉन्केव अपवर्ड इस वजह से इट इज लाइक अ ब्यूटिफुल बेल और इस प्रॉपर्टी में हमने ये कहा कि दीज टू पॉइंट्स आर इक्वी डिस्टेंट फ्रॉम द मीन वन इज अगेंस्ट द एक्स वैल्यू म्यू माइनस सिग्मा एंड द अदर अगेंस्ट द एक्स वैल्यू म्यू प्लस सिग्मा और ऑर्डिनेट्स बराबर हैं एंड द ऑर्डिनेट्स आर एट बोथ पॉइंट्स वन ओवर सिग्मा स्क्वेयर रूट ऑफ टू पाई इन टू ई ऑल राइट हैविंग डिस्कस द मेन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन टू द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विच इज कॉल्ड द स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड अ नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हुज मीन इज जीरो एंड हुज स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज वन इज कॉल्ड द स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जैसा कि आपने देखा दिस इज अ वेरी सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट मैंने आपसे शुरू में कहा था दैट म्यू एंड सिग्मा आर द टू पैरामीटर्स ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तो अगर म्यू की वैल्यू हम जीरो रख दें और सिग्मा की वैल्यू वन रख दें तो हमें जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मिलती है दैट इज कॉल्ड द स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तो आप कहेंगे कि फिर इसकी क्या अहमियत है स्टूडेंट्स इसकी एक्चुअली बहुत ज़्यादा अहमियत है और मैं आपको एक्सप्लेन करूँगी कि ये जो नॉर्मल कर्व है ना जी इसके अंडर अगर हमें कोई भी एरिया कंप्यूट करना हो तो हमारा ऑर्डिनरी प्रोसीजर क्या है दैट वी शुड फाइंड अ सर्टन इंटीग्रल अ डेफिनेट इंटीग्रल बट द पॉइंट इज दैट द इक्वेजन ऑफ द नॉर्मल कर्व इज सो कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एज यू सो इन द बिगनिंग वेन आई प्रजेंटेड दैट इक्वेजन दैट इट इज नॉट ईजी to find the integral or the areas under the curve of the normal distribution by ordinary methods of integration rather we have to resort to the more advanced method that of numerical integration isliye hum ye jo standard normal distribution hai we are going to utilize this particular distribution in order to compute any area or in other words any probability that we are interested in the point is that fisher and yates have already constructed for us the table of areas under the standard normal curve and it is a table of the type that you now see on the screen in the very first column of the table as well as on the very top of the table in the top row we have numbers which represent various values of z where z is the standard normal variable and in the body of the table we have the areas any area from z equal to 0 up to any particular z value that we might be interested in for example if you look in the first column after the column of z and you look at the third value students that number is 0.0793 and this number represents the area under the standard normal distribution from z equal to 0 up to z equal to 
to 0. The reason why I am saying this is that if you look at the first column, you have z equal to 0 0.2 against the number 0 0.0793 and if you look directly above the number 0 0.0793, then you find that in the very, very top row of this table, the number is 0 0.00. Darasal ye jo top row mein number hai, ye second decimal ko indicate karta hai aur hum first column ke z number aur top row wale z number ko combine karke wo z value malum karte hai jis ki hum baat kar rahe hoon. In this case, pehle column se hume mila z equal to 0 0.2 or bilkul top row mein 0, 0.00 jo likha hua hai, uska jo second decimal page number hai, that is 0. And so, combining the two, we have 0 0.20. As I said earlier, 0 0.0793 is the area under the standard normal curve from z equal to 0 up to z equal to 0 0.20. Bilkul isi tara, if you look at the third value in the column which is headed by the number 0 0.01, you find that this number is 0 0.0832 and this means that the area under the standard normal curve between z equal to 0 and z equal to 0 0.21 is 0 0.0832. Students, I have presented to you a detailed explanation of how to use the table of areas under the standard normal curve. And the reason is that you will be res uh, referring to this table again and again and again in solving various problems and the procedure will be that in any problem involving the normal distribution, first we will convert our normal distribution into the standard normal distribution by the process of standardization and once this conversion has happened, then we will apply this table that I just presented to you. Now, what do I mean by the process of standardization? As you now see on the screen, the standardization formula is z is equal to x minus mu over sigma and if we apply this formula, then we find that if the random variable x is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then z will be normally distributed with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. In other words, this formula z is equal to x minus mu over sigma is the standardization formula jis ke zariye koi bhi normal distribution standard normal distribution mein convert ki ja sakti hai. All right, let me now present to you a very interesting example students which will not only convey to you how to use the table of areas but also it will hopefully convey to you the importance of the normal distribution in real life situations. As you now see on the screen, suppose that the length of life for an automatic dishwasher is approximately normally distributed with a mean life of 3.5 years and a standard deviation of 1.0 year. If this type of dishwasher is guaranteed for 12 months, what fraction of the sales will require replacement? Students, aye, isko zara step by step analyze karte hain. 
پہلی بات یہ ہے کہ ہمارا ویریبل آف انٹرسٹ جو ہے دیٹ از دی لائف لینتھ آف دا ڈش واشر کسی ایک فیکٹری میں ڈش واشرز پروڈیوس ہو رہے ہیں اور پچھلے پانچ دس سال کا جو ان کا ریکارڈ ہے اس سے انہیں معلوم ہے کہ آن دی ایوریج دیئر ڈش واشر لاسٹس تھری اینڈ ہاف ایئرز دیر فور وی سے دیٹ دا مین لائف از تھری اینڈ ہاف ایئرز لیکن ظاہر ہے کہ کچھ ڈش واشر زیادہ دیر چلتے ہیں کچھ جلدی خراب ہو جائیں گے سو وی ہیو ویریشن اینڈ دا میجر آف ویریشن از دا اسٹینڈرڈ ڈیویشن اینڈ دیٹ از ایکول ٹو ون ایئر اب یہ انفارمیشن ہمیں حاصل ہے اور اس کے علاوہ دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ پوائنٹ دیٹ بیسڈ آن دا پاسٹ ریکارڈ آف آل دا ڈش واشرز سولڈ اینڈ کنزیومڈ بائی پیپل ان دا پاسٹ um they found that if they draw the histogram of this particular frequency distribution in which x represents the time the life of the dishwasher and f of course represents the number of dishwashers falling in various time classes they find that this histogram is approximately normally distributed yani بہت کم لائف والے ڈش واشرس کی تعداد بھی کم ہے بہت زیادہ لائف والے ڈش واشرس بھی کم ہیں تعداد میں اور تھری اینڈ ہاف ایئرس یا تھری یا فور یعنی وہ جو ایوریج لائف ہے نا بہت زیادہ ڈش واشرز ہیں وچ آر اوور دیئر دیر فور آور ہسٹوگرام رائزز اینڈ فالس and if we draw a curve on top of the histogram it is like a normal distribution ye sari assumption jo hai students this is not unrealistic jaisa ki main aap se pehle keh chuki hu bahut se phenomena hain which are like a hump which is approximately normal so having understood this basic point now what is the problem in this example the problem is ke wo jo dishwasher banane wali factory hai unke jo managers hain ya unke jo owner hain unhone guarantee jo dete hain na ke agar is muddat se pehle um, dishwasher kharab ho jaye to then we will replace it for free that guarantee has been placed as 12 months and the question is that we want to find what fraction or what proportion of the dishwashers will have to be replaced for free in other words students we can say that we would like to find the probability that a dishwasher fails before 12 months now since 12 months is equal to 1 year therefore what we have to do is to find the area under our normal curve in this problem and the area from minus infinity up to 1 as you now see on the screen as i stated earlier the theoretical normal distribution starts from minus infinity and goes up to infinity and although of course all of us will agree that the minimum life length of any dishwasher can be zero and not minus infinity but if we try to model this particular real life situation by the normal distribution then we will be finding the area under the normal curve from minus infinity up to x equal to 1 jaisa ki maine aapse pehle kaha it is not easy to find this area directly so students we will first use the process of standardization and we will convert our x to z by the formula z is equal to x minus mu over sigma so as you now see on the slide in this problem z is equal to x minus 
the whole thing divided by 1.0 and since our x value to the left of which we wish to compute the area is 1.0 therefore substituting this value in the expression for z z comes out to be minus 2.5 over 1 and that is equal to minus 2.5. So, is ka matlab ye hua ke we need to find the area under the standard normal curve from minus infinity up to minus 2.5. But students, ye jo area table maine abhi aapke saamne present ki, us mein aapne note kiya hoga ke z ki tamam values positive thi and the area table usually is constructed in this manner only that you do not find negative values of z. So, how do we tackle the problem? It is quite simple. The point to be understood is that the curve is absolutely symmetrical about the mean. Isliye, jitna area minus infinity se minus 2.5 tak aapko curve ki left side par milega, you will have exactly the same area on the right side of the curve between 2.5 and plus infinity. So, what we need to concentrate on first is the area under the standard normal curve from 2.5 to plus infinity. As you now see on the screen, this area is on the extreme right of the normal distribution, but according to the table of areas that I just presented to you students, you will be able to find first the area from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 2.5. Bilkul usi tarah se, jis tarah maine explain kiya, aap 2.5 ka jo number hai, usko locate kare in the first column of the table or chunke isme we are not saying 2.51 or 2.53 isliye wo jo pehla column hai jiski heading hai 0, 0.00 that is the column to look under. So, under the value 0, 0.00 against the value 2.5 we find that the number is 0 0.4938 and this is exactly the area that lies between z equal to 0 and z equal to 2.5. All right, 0 se leke 2.5 tak ka area hume mil gaya, lekin hume to 2.5 se aage wala chahiye. How do we find that? Aap ko yaad hai na, that because the distribution is absolutely symmetrical, therefore the area from 0 to infinity is exactly 0 0.5 and the area from minus infinity to 0 of course is also exactly 0 0.5. Is taraf chunke total area 0 0.5 hai between z equal to 0 and infinity aur jo humne find kiya that is 0.4938 is liye jo tail area hume chahiye that is obtained by subtracting this area internal that we just found from 0 0.5. And as you now see on the screen, this area comes out to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4938 is equal to 0 0.0062. The area between 2.5 and plus infinity is exactly equal to the area between minus infinity and minus 2.5 and hence we can say that the required area, the one that we wanted to find in this particular problem that is equal to 0 0.0062. Is ki interpretation kya hai? Dekhye, 0 0.0062 jo hai na, that is even less than 0.01 or is ka matlab ye hua that the probability that the life length of a dishwasher 
is less than 1 year, this probability is extremely small and it is even less than 1 percent. Iska matlab ye hua ke even less than 1 percent of the dishwashers that are sold will require replacement. Yani jo log wapis aayenge ye kehte huye ke ek saal bhi nahi chala, bara mahine bhi nahi chala aur aapki guarantee ke mutabik to ye usse pehle fail ho gaya. Lehaza aap replace ki jay. Aisa hone ki probability jo hai that is 0.0062 even less than 1 percent. Dekhiye students, is example se aap ye understand ki jay ke is qisam ki probabilistic calculations kis qadar helpful sabit ho sakti hain in making important decisions. Agar is tara se past record ke zariye is tara ki calculation ki jaye to management jo hai they can decide whether it is appropriate to give a guarantee of one year or maybe it is better that they should give a guarantee of two years. Agar wo aise hi computation two years ke liye kar le and if they find ke even when we put x equal to 2 that area is still quite small then they can decide that um, they can afford that. Agar farz ki jay 3 percent nikal aata hai wo area it means only 3 percent of the people will come back and if they think that they can afford to replace for free even 3 percent of the dishwashers, then why should they not write two years on the guarantee rather than one year? Saaf zahir hai ke agar wo two years likhenge, to zyada customers attract honge as compared with if they write one year. Students, the example that we just did was of the direct use of the area table. Jab kabhi bhi aap kisi z value ke against area find karna chahte hain. This is called the direct use of the area table and the procedure is as I just explained. But we can also use the area table in the other order and that is called the inverse use of the area table. Kya matlab? Ke hamare paas ab ek area available hai and we would like to find the corresponding z value and also the corresponding x value. Pehle z value malum thi aur area nikala, ab area available hai aur z value nikalenge. Let me explain this with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. The heights of applicants to the police force in a certain country are normally distributed with mean 170 centimeter and standard deviation 3.8 centimeter. If 1000 persons apply for being inducted into the police force and it has been decided that not more than 70 percent of these applicants will be accepted and the shortest 30 percent are to be rejected, then what is the minimum acceptable height for the police force? Students, aapne dekha ke this is also quite an interesting problem aur ab is baat pe ghor ki jay ke jo mein thodi dher pehle aap se keh rahi thi ke in some situations an area is available and we want to find the z value ye baat yahan pe kis tara apply hoti hai. Is baat ko understand karne ke liye students first of all let us visualize the normal distribution that we have at our disposal. So as you now see on the slide our normal distribution has a mean of 170 and the standard deviation is equal to 3.8. As the value 170 
is in the exact middle of the distribution. Therefore, 50% of the area under the normal curve lies to its left and 50% to the right. But students, we are interested in that particular value of x to the left of which the area is 30% and to the right it is 70%. ऐसा क्यों? इसलिए के जो कट ऑफ जहाँ पे होना है ना, that is that point. हमने कहा था ना कि shortest 30% जो हैं, they have to be rejected. So we have to determine that particular cut off point. And before we can find it in terms of x, we will first find it in terms of z. As you now see on the screen, the standardization formula z is equal to x minus mu over sigma can be rewritten as x is equal to mu plus sigma z. And substituting the values of mu and sigma in this problem, we obtain x is equal to 170 plus 3.8 z. Now, we will first find the value of z using the area table and substituting that z value in this particular equation, we will be able to find the required x value that is that height which is the cutoff point. Hum jis z value ki baat kar rahe hain, that is on the left hand side of z equal to 0 which is the mean or ye wo z value hai jiske left side par area hai 30 percent or jiske right side par area hai 70 percent. Lekin jo area z equal to 0 or is particular z value ke darmiyan hai that is equal to 20 percent. Ye sari baat jo maine kahi this pertains to that z value which is to the left side of z equal to 0. Iska matlab ye hua ki agar hum is value ko determine kar lehen students, it will be a negative number kyunke z, uh, 0 ke left side pe jo number hai, obviously that is going to be negative. Lekin, jaisa ki maine thodi der pehle aap se kaha tha, jo humari area table hai, us mein we only find positive values of z. To, we can do something similar to what we did in the last problem, we should realize that whatever happens to the left of z equal to 0 happens in a very similar manner to the right of z equal to 0. And as you now see on the screen, we can think of that particular z value which is to the right of z equal to 0 and the area from 0 to that particular z value is 20 percent whereas the area from that particular z value up to plus infinity is 30 percent. Now we are in a position to consult the area table of the standard normal distribution. Ye jo area hume nazar araha hai between 0 and our z value this is 20 percent which is the same as 0 0.2000 and this is exactly the value that we, we would like to find in the body of the area table. But students, jab aap area table ko study karenge, to aap dekhenge ke uske body ke andar 0 0.2000 aapko nahi mil lega. Then how do we tackle this problem? As you now see on the screen, the value that we have against z is equal to 0 0.52 is 0 0.1985 and the value that we have against z equal to 0 0.53 is 0 0.2019. Now 0 0.1985 is closer to 0 0.2000 than 0 0.2019. Hence, 
the value that we consider is going to be 0 0.52. Ye jo kuch maine abhi explain kiya, iska mafhoom ye hai ke humne ye determine kar liya ke z equal to 0 or z equal to 0 0.52 ke darmiyan the area is approximately 0 0.2000. जैसा कि आपने देखा कि अगर एग्जैक्ट वो वैल्यू ना मिले आपको तो जो उसके क्लोजेस्ट वैल्यू आपको उस एरिया टेबल के बॉडी के अंदर से मिलती है दैट इज द वैल्यू दैट यू कंसीडर नाउ हैविंग फाउंड दिस z वैल्यू 0.52 स्टूडेंट्स वी रियलाइज दैट दिस इज द वन व्हिच इज ऑन द राइट साइड ऑफ z 0 लेकिन आपको याद है ना हम तो लेफ्ट साइड में इंटरेस्टेड हैं now, because of the absolute symmetry of the normal distribution, I hope that you realize that whatever is happening on this side for z is equal to 0 0.52, exactly the same kind of a thing is happening on the left hand side for z equal to minus 0 0.52. And hence, minus 0 0.52 is that z value that I will substitute in the equation that I presented to you earlier. As you now see on the slide, our equation was x is equal to 170 plus 3.8 z and putting z is equal to minus 0 0.52, I obtain x is equal to 168.024, which is approximately equal to 168. Hence, we have arrived at the conclusion that the minimum acceptable height is 168 centimeter for induction into the police force according to the criterion that they had set. So, you have seen that we have area table ko directly use karne ke ilawa inversely bhi istemal kar sakte hain and we can arrive at some very important and useful results regarding our problem. Just as I mentioned to you that the binomial distribution and the Poisson distribution and other distributions can be fitted to real data. Similarly, we can fit a normal distribution to real life data provided that we are reasonably confident by looking at the histogram or by looking at the proportions of areas within the intervals x bar plus minus s, x bar plus minus 2s and so on, that our distribution is approximately normal. Agar hume lage ke humari distribution normal ki tarah ki hai, to hum ek pura procedure hai jiske zariye we can fit a normal distribution to our data and then Applying the chi-square test of goodness of fit, we can also determine whether or not our fit is good. What I will discuss with you now is the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Ye bada interesting sa concept hai. Aapko maaloom hai ke binomial distribution to discrete distribution hai. Aur jab hum uska graph banate hai, so that is a line chart in which we have separate lines or normal distribution zahir hai ki because it is a continuous distribution is liye the curve is a continuous curve. To phir ye kaise hoga ke hum ye kahe ke we are using the normal distribution which is a continuous distribution to approximate the binomial distribution which is a discrete distribution. Students, I will explain this to you with the help of an example and you will realize that there is something called the continuity correction which enables us to do exactly what I just said to approximate a discrete distribution by the continuous uh, normal distribution. As you now see on the slide, suppose that the past records indicate that in a particular province of an underdeveloped country, the death rate from malaria is 20 percent. 
find the probability that in a particular village of that particular province, the number of deaths is between 70 and 80 inclusive out of a total of 500 patients of malaria. Students, sabse pehle ye dekhiye ki kya hum ek binomial experiment ke saath deal kar rahe hain. Pehli baat ye hai ki what is success and what is failure? Now we are talking about malaria patients. Either a patient will survive or a patient will die from malaria. And if we regard dying as success, then we can deal with this problem quite conveniently because as you just noticed, our query was that out of a total of 500 patients, what is the probability that the number of patients who will die, that number lies between 70 and 80, including 70 and 80. मैंने आपसे पहले कहा था ना कि सक्सेस का ये मतलब नहीं है कि इट इज समथिंग वेरी गुड इट इज अ टेक्निकल टर्म एंड इट रिप्रेजेंट्स दैट आउटकम दैट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन इन एनी पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम तो ये तो हो गई पहली बात दूसरी बात कि द वेरियस ट्रायल्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट तो यहाँ पर अगर हम ये अस्यूम करें कि ऑल दीज पेशेंट्स आर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ईच अदर तो फिर ये जो पास्ट रिकॉर्ड से हमें मालूम हुआ कि प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ डाइंग फ्रॉम दिस डिजीज इन दैट प्रोविंस इज 20 परसेंट वी कैन से दैट दिस प्रॉबिलिटी इज कांस्टेंट फ्रॉम पेशेंट टू पेशेंट एंड दस द थर्ड प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द बायोनॉमिल एक्सपेरिमेंट इज आल्सो सेटिस्फाइड पी इज इक्वल टू 20 परसेंट दैट इज जीरो और आखिरी बात क्या थी that the number of trials is fixed in advance. Chunke hum keh rahe hain ke we have a total of 500 patients. Therefore, the number of trials n is 500 and it is a fixed number. Now that we are confident that we are indeed dealing with a binomial experiment, students, the next point is when can we apply the normal approximation? The answer is that if neither p nor q is close to zero and if n is large then we can apply the normal approximation to the binomial. The rule of thumb in this regard is that if both np and nq are greater than or equal to 5 then we can apply this approximation. In this problem np is equal to 500 into 0 0.2 and that is equal to 100 and nq is equal to 500 into 0 0.8 and that is equal to 400. Now both these quantities are much much larger than 5 and hence we can happily apply the normal approximation to the binomial in this particular problem. The next very important concept is continuity correction. When I have said that binomial distribution is a discrete distribution and we have a line chart as you know we have separate bars and the normal distribution is a continuous curve. So in order to find the probability that my x variable lies between 70 and 80 because x represents the number of deaths from malaria students agar mai ise binomial ke zariye karun to aap isko yun samjhen ke wo jo lines ya bars humne banai hain unki lambaiyan which present the probabilities of those x values we will have to consider those lengths and adding them all up we find the probability but if we want to do this through the normal distribution we will be superimposing a normal curve on top of those bars as you now see on the screen and in order to justify this process, what we need to do is to replace every x value which is an isolated point on the x axis by an interval. The x value 70 is replaced by the interval 69.5 to 70.5. The x value 71 is replaced by the interval 70.5 to 
71.5 and so on. And in this way, our region from x equal to 70 to x equal to 80 is replaced by the region x equal to 69.5 to x equal to 80.5. Yani, because of the continuity correction, our region is expanded in this particular problem slightly. Next, we have to find the area under the normal distribution between x equal to 69.5 and 80.5. And for that, of course, we use the process of standardization that I have already explained to you. As you now see on the slide, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. And in this particular problem, since we are basically dealing with a binomial experiment and a binomial distribution, therefore, mu is equal to NP and sigma square is equal to NPQ. Hence, our formula becomes Z is equal to X minus 100 over 8.94 because mu is NP and NP is equal to 100 and sigma square is NPQ giving us a variance equal to 80 whose square root 8.94 is the standard deviation that we require in our formula. Students, I now leave it to you to compute the area under the normal curve between x equal to 69.5 and 80.5. You will be transforming x to z and then you will consult the area table of the standard normal distribution in order to find the required area. And it may be a few steps before you arrive at the final answer, which is 0 0.0145, indicating that the probability that the number of deaths from malaria in this particular village of this particular province, out of a total of 500 patients, the number of deaths lies between 70 and 80, including these two values. This probability is 0.0145 or in other words, one and a half percent. All right, students, this brings us to the end of the second segment of this particular course and the segment on probability theory. Next time, inshallah, we will begin the third and last segment of this course a very interesting portion and that is inferential statistics. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to attempt a lot many questions on the normal distribution so that you feel at home and comfortable with this distribution. My best wishes to you and until next time, Allah Hafiz.